Uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there, humans of these earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Bushkin. Today's video is the FV4202. It's no stranger to channel. I've played this tank a hell of a lot. It is one of my most loved and enjoyed vehicles in Blitz. In fact, if you're adding up all the uh, time you spend and the dollars you spend and the credits you spend, pound for pound, this has given me just about as much joy and frivolity as any other World of Tanks Blitz vehicle has. It's a tier 10 British medium, and for the longest time, it was the only way to play a Hesh rolling tank in tier 10. So it got an awful lot of use, and it was incredibly unfairly, in my opinion, uh, balanced against that. The gun is exceptionally good. It's the L7A1. Well, nowadays they have different names for it. The tank, uh, when it's running the Hesh gun, is actually running the L7B 105mm. But all the while it was called the 105mm Royal Ordnance L7A1, or uh, swap it over to the poundage if you're really keen on it. And it's undergone an awful lot of changes. They've always had issues balancing this, and they've always erred on the side of caution. Uh, because as you can see, it is very, very good in terms of dispersion, uh, but it lacked penetration. The old numbers were very odd uh, in that it had all kinds of limiting factors. The DPM without Hesh was severely limited. The tank, in fact, got to 40 kilometers an hour as a maximum speed for a T10 medium well and truly a long time ago. But before the medium rebalances or nerfs as they're called took place and basically it used to get to 40 so quickly and then it'd be like ng, 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 like it was revving against a speed limiter uh and it was always very odd to me when you had tanks like the t62a which back in the day had the dirtiest hull armor going around and turret armor combination going around it was absolutely filthy um anyway be that as it may it's a hell of a tank now uh the tank itself has had a huge buff to the turret armor. Uh, the turret used to be paper thin. It was so hard to get bounces on it unless you were using all 10 degrees of the gun depression at a very, very steep elevation. Only then would the turret really work its magic. And to be honest, there just aren't that many opportunities in Blitz to use that gun depression to like a massive, massive degree. Um, you're going to see from my loadout here, I'm not running any cheap hash. The cheap hash, if you're going to run this tank, your cheap hash is going to do 116 millimeters a pen. It's cheap. If you're worried about the cash, run some of that and some of the premium. But for me, I'm only running this tank to use premium hash whenever and however I can. And I generally err on the side of not caution. <laughs> I, I err on the side of Let's have a, a high possibility outcome here, even though the probability is extraordinarily low. The third game you're going to see today uh, is one of the best I've played all week. Really, really spectacular game. You're going to see it. It's a comeback from the brink of death, and I hope you'd very much enjoy it. We now have a tank in the FV422 that is actually very, very mobile uh, and has great gun depression and has a strong turret, although obviously... With all the power creep that happens in Blitz, it's it's not overpowered at all. It still gets penned pretty easily, but it, it does get the occasional bounce like that. As you can see, that TVP having a crack at me. Um, and it's a tank that has a pretty high top speed now, 60 kilometers an hour. It was used to be speed limited out to 40, and that's a huge buff. Obviously, we're going to go for the Hesh roll here, and then we decide just to go with a, uh, a poor outcome. That's how you do it. And we're getting another turret bounce there. Sneak out, hit the AP, because there's only 324 left on the hit point pool. And that's 350 average alpha for your AP rounds. The gun DPM uh, is about 3k a minute when you're running the calibrated shells. And I tend to. If you don't, that pops out to about 3300 per minute. You can get the dispersion down to 0.277 if you're running the refined gun. And I generally run the the whole sniper roll, uh, which is all right-hand side of the combat power area, but it works equally as well on the other side as a, a little bit more fundamentally raw brute strength 
uh, weapon. The high rolls there on the AP, obviously very, very nice. And that's that 0.277 dispersion coming into the floor there on that Type 71 hatch shot. I'm going to run you through a little bit about why I think this is such a spectacular tank. Um, it's, it's the Hesh combined with a good armor profile and excellent mobility and good gun depression. I find gun depression tanks just so much more versatile in the game. It's not that I don't run an awful lot of 62A because I still love that tank to bits, but I just, I just find that even tanks which don't really get a huge mention like the M48A1 Patton, for instance, or the uh, M60, you know, tanks like that, they can be really, not superb, but really strong overall just by i didn't expect a 734 roll from that e100 by the way uh but either way it was going to leave me on a, a one shot uh, they are just capable of so much more and then you combine that with this high alpha shell where you can put 500 into the side of an e100 turret in a tier 10 medium it just gives you so much possibilities so many possibilities and, and such a a high-end outcome i mean we've just we've just absolutely shredded that guy uh and that was just from getting the flank i'm going to show you another video now on hellas another 5k game and it's and that might be giving away a little bit another 5k game on hellas and it's it's pretty special i think it's uh it's a real smart drive um we're going to start off from the opposite spawn uh, to the game you just saw and a very different makeup. There's only myself out here on the medium flank and I'm using that to my advantage. I'm going to the light tank spotting position. Um, basically, I'm expecting like a Minotaro or someone like that. They love coming across here. Well, not the Minotaro, sorry. The CC. Um, Enemy the Mark II, the Tier 9. And they love getting across here. The, one of the real hallmarks of that class is how much they love getting involved on a medium or a light tank flank trying to use their armor profile i mean that's a smart thing to do so we get two very cheeky shots in there which is nice to open the proceedings and the team's gone strong side heavy um we have a light tank out there he's not done a lot yet uh and we're looking at this and they've really pumped the left flank they're actually doing very, very well there. They uh, have got it down to a five on three, which is not a good thing for us. And we're starting to realize if we don't shift here very, very quickly, this is going to be a done deal. So we move over and we start looking to get shots into that FV215B183. And I've got to make a decision here between hitting shots and capping. And I'm going to try and do both which is great because the light tank's rolled forward and he's spotting the 183 for me. We've brought it back to a little bit of parity. We're only one tank down now. And the big donk over there is, the, it's a tank to be very worried about. Like if you love, love Hesh, that's a, a great tank to love. We get a, a low ass Povo Hesh roll, which always happens. And then we start loading him up for more of the good stuff. Three fours, everyone loves the fours. Switch over to the AP so we can confirm the kill. Boom, there's our first of the day and we're off to the races. But we have lost a bunch of tanks in the process and we lost another one again. So it's now five tanks to three. Our light tank's going all the way around the back and he's been caught out of position by the WZ113 who has absolutely ripped him. Uh, and now we're getting the noob calls and everyone's starting to blow up, as is his standard one. What I'm going to do here is take a position and try and leverage this last tank to get some shots into these advancing heavies from this hull down spot here. I'm going to do my very best. And that you can see that 50 TP. Watch the gun handling here. That is right under the turret ring. And that's a very important shot because it's going to make that 50 TP kind of combat ineffective. He's pulled back. We don't have a lot of time to waste. We're going to go around here and start getting shots in the E75. And we're basically using the hit point pull on our CC to start really ramping up. There's four tanks to one here. But that cap we got earlier and the C cap that they haven't actually, sorry, the A cap that they haven't actually recapped, you can see it's ticking up. All we really need here is to hold for a bit and get another kill, which is a big ask considering there's a uh, 
268 right next to me and a Cranvargan right next to him. So here we go. We're pumping them out and we know we've got the hit points. We've been very, very careful with our hit points. And we're pumping big Hesh holes. 455. We're looking at the hit points and we're looking at that clock. We're up to 810. We get this kill and we're going to drive through here. Watch this. We're going to get this hit and drive through. Straight through. Oh, that hurt. That hurt. The engine got big time smashed, but we're on 910. We're going to try and track him as he comes around the corner. This is for all the marbles. Boom. And there's still one guy behind me. I'm trying to keep my ass hidden here. I'm very, very worried because the second guy's coming up. If I could just get through. 980. Got to get back. Get back. Oh, I can't move. Ah! 1,000. How about that for a finish? That was pulling it out of the absolute jaws of defeat. Uh, don't get the Kolobanovsky because it's a supremacy win as time expires. Only a first class, but a hell of a drive, I thought. I was really happy. I felt like I was back when I walked through that one and actually got the job done. I think that's about 1,500 XP, which isn't enough, but 156,000 credits and uh, 1,567. Pretty solid effort all around. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like the channel, uh, subscribe, leave a comment below if you enjoyed the video, and just uh, have a good time out there on the battlefield. Until next time. Look after yourselves and bye for now. Au revoir, amigos.